Andrew Huberman is a professor at Stanford University. He is a leading researcher in the field of neuroscience, focusing on how the brain works. He has gained recent popularity for his podcast, The Huberman Lab Podcast, where he discusses topics related to health, productivity, and neuroscience. And I did his daily routine for 30 days to optimize my health and performance. Good morning, everyone. It's currently 7 a.m. 26th of December and I'm starting daily routine by Andrew Huberman. After implementing Andrew Huberman's sleep protocol last night, I slept pretty okay, uh, but let's see what my aura ring says. So overall readiness score, I had like 86, uh, sleep score 80, total sleep seven and a half hours. Yes, but I'm uh, excited to implement these things for 30 days and see how it improves. Andrew Huberman, divides his days in three phases. Zero to nine hours after waking, that is from the time you wake up until about nine hours later, the neuromodulators dopamine and epinephrine tend to be at their highest levels that they will be at any point in the 24 hour period, in any period of the day. So we can call this zero to nine hour period phase one of the day just for simplicity. So one of the biggest things what Andrew suggests is getting sunlight exposure in your eyes as early as possible to reset your circadian rhythm and uh, improve your sleep quality. But uh, currently outside is looking like this, not really a sunlight. I will get back to sunlight exposure later in the day. Hopefully it's gonna be sunny today. Salt intake is homeostatically regulated. It is the case that if you're craving salt, you probably need it. So for those of you that are sweating excessively, or even if you're in a very hot environment uh, and you're not exercising and you're just losing, uh, you're losing water and salt from your system. So if you're exercising a lot, if you're in a particular cold, dry environment or a particular hot environment, you ought to be ingesting sufficient amounts of salt and fluid. Electrolytes. Ele electrolytes contain sodium, magnesium, potassium, and calcium. Uh, sodium is the main component, which is also salt. I'm also adding to my drink lemon to improve my digestion. But drinking salt, uh, electrolytes rich water helps to support body's production of neurotransmitters, which are responsible for regulating mood, emotions, and other cognitive functions. Here's what Andrew Huberman has to say about it. Sodium carries a positive charge. So you have neurons that you can just imagine, a, for sake of this uh, discussion, you can just imagine as a sphere with a little wire sticking out of it. They, you can put a little minus on the inside for negative. You can put a little plus on the outside for positive. And when that neuron is stimulated by another neuron, is sodium rushes into the cell, carrying a lot of charge into the cell. And as a consequence, the charge of that cell goes from negative, actually very negative, to quite positive. And if it hits a certain threshold of positive charge, because of all the sodium ions going into the, the cell, then it fires what's called an action potential. I've been doing cold showers for some quite time. Not only it's good for your mentality, uh, stepping out of your comfort zone, by taking cold shower in the morning can increase your dopamine hit and help you wake up and give the energy for your day. Also, cold showers can improve your metabolism and improve your circulation. Put people into deliberate cold up to the neck for 11 minutes total per week, so not one session. They observe legitimate increases in brown fat. Mm -hmm. People become more comfortable at cold temperatures. You get this 2.5x increase in dopamine that lasts many hours. Norepinephrine, epinephrine, and dopamine are called the catecholamines, all increase substantially. One of my non-negotiables daily is meditating for 10 to 20 minutes and I have been doing it for past two years and I have noticed increased happiness and focus in my daily life. The meditation I am doing is six-phase meditation but I have added Andrew Huberman's principle of imagining two difficult tasks, one for physical and one for cognitive and imagining what will happen if I fail those tasks and consequences for that increase my dopamine. For me, the hard cognitive task will be my research project for my graduation phase and the physical task will be a gym workout early in the morning. Uh, I usually enjoy working out, but uh, later in the afternoon. Andrew Huberman is big on meditation. 
Meditation is all about changing our state of mind, and the biological mechanisms behind it are fascinating. By learning specific breath for patterns and adjusting your perception, you can get the most out of your meditation practice. Doing this can lead to long-term trait changes, like reducing anxiety and depression, improved focus, better sleep, and even increased happiness. Please get as much light exposure from sunlight early in the day as possible because it sets in motion a huge number of things that are beneficial for your mental health and physical health, including dopamine production, timing melatonin. So now when the sun is out, getting my sunlight exposure and having a morning walk. So doing two things in one time. Also usually listening some audio book or podcast. Currently listening a podcast by Joe Rogan and David Goggins. Highly recommend to everyone, besides from doing regular exercises, uh, getting uh, sufficient sleep, getting that early sunlight in your eyes is the key for your mental, physical, and performance health. So one thing that you can do is when you wake up in the morning, don't ingest caffeine for the first 90 minutes or so. Then you drink caffeine, and what you'll find is that if normally you would crash around 2 or 3 in the afternoon, you don't experience that crash anymore. Mm. Because the caffeine wears off, but there isn't a lot of adenosine there to bind the receptor. Back in the days, I was drinking coffee straight after waking up. Uh, which led to afternoon crash. Uh, and then I also saw like Huberman's podcast, which he recommends to delay your first coffee 90 minutes to two hours after waking up. And if you are drinking coffee straight after waking up, try to delay it and see the changes in your energy levels. So now it's time for my difficult physical task, which will be leg day. Today is also Monday. On Mondays, Andrew also does leg day. So let's get it. Well, depending on how you train, we'll talk about details of training. The reason for training legs on Monday is several fold. First of all, they are the largest muscle groups of the body. And by training your legs on Monday, it sets in motion a large number of metabolic processes that carry you some distance, even through the whole week in terms of elevating metabolism, in terms of amplifying certain hormonal events in your body, et cetera, that are really beneficial. In addition to that, I'm of the belief that the legs are the foundation of the body and provided you can train legs safely, that training legs is vitally important, not just for strength of the legs, but also for strength of your entire body. Again, some of that is through systemic hormonal effects, because if you're going to train the large muscle groups of your body under substantial loads, you will get systemic release of hormones, not just testosterone, although certainly testosterone, but also things like growth hormone, you get increases in all sorts of so-called anabolic hormones that even if you're somebody who's not trying to increase muscle size, because I realize a lot of people are not trying to do that, these are hormones that shift your metabolism and your overall tendon strength and ligament strength and overall musculature into what I would call a strong foundation. So for me, Monday is leg workout. It also just feels good to get the leg workout out of the way early in the week. So after completing my physical challenging task, now it's time to complete my cognitive difficult task. The most challenging cognitive task for me, it's uh, doing my research project for my graduation phase. I don't particularly enjoy it and would rather spend my time learning and educating myself in health performance topics as it's my passion and I am myself an online coach and guiding other serious individuals in the same journey. However, I have came too far in my university education, so I have to finish it. Huberman declares himself a big fan of fixed 90 minute work blocks in which he forces himself to keep his butt in the chair, at least attempting to be productive for a whole hour and a half. After the 90 minute work block, you want to take 20 minutes time off. Usually he does his work cycles in standing or sitting. So after completing both my uh, hard tasks, mm -hmm. uh, now it's time for breakfast, then I break my fast. I'm myself a big fan of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is well known for uh, weight loss. I'm more interested in focus, energy benefits it provides. Huberman, who is also a big fan of intermittent fasting, noted one of his episodes that intermittent fasting provides many health benefits. Intermittent fasting, has a lot of different potential benefits. For some people, it's a convenient way to restrict their calories. For other people, it's a convenient way to avoid eating. That is, it's easier to not eat than to eat a small portion, so they opt for intermittent fasting, and so on and so forth. But one of the things that you hear very often is that some people like being fasted because they like the clarity of mind that it provides. Supplements Andrew uses for cognitive and physical performance. 
creatine 5 grams daily, whey protein 40 grams, omega 3 fatty acids, vitamin D. So my first meal after completing both difficult tasks is a bagel uh, with 4 eggs and avocado, protein uh, whey smoothie with banana uh, creatine and whey protein. Not gonna lie, I was so hungry after gym and doing my cognitive difficult task for school. But now I have like a good feeling that I have really earned my meal. So now I'm gonna enjoy that. Phase two, and that's when dopamine and epinephrine levels tend to subside a bit compared to the earlier phase one part of the day. And serotonin levels start to increase. So phase two, second half of the day. Now it's a great time to do some stuff which doesn't need a lot of time or focus. Creative activities such as writing stories, painting, reading books, uh, cooking new meals, trying new things are good idea. For me, it's now a great time to edit some videos, read some books, or listen podcasts in a field which I'm interested to learn some new stuff. So comparison from phase one and phase two is that on a phase one you want to do just a couple things, but you want to do them right. And on the phase two, things which you want to do, but you don't want to be perfect, and that's okay. Now. I'm reading a book, Way of the Wolf. Probably you have seen the movie, Wolf of Wall Street. I recommend everyone wants to learn about sales or wants to get better at sales. For example, that's my topic. I want to improve in my sales to be more confident. And that's what I'll be doing. What are you making? What? What are you making? I'm making... Pizza? No, pizza. Yeah, we're eating pizza tonight. No. <laughs> and ice cream. No. And cookies. No. And um, Pringles. No. That's our dinner. No. This is the... These are the cookies. <laughs> it's high protein chicken. Here we have the McDonald's fries. <laughs> Here we have some candy, sweet candy, black rice, and here are our other yeah. sweets. Don't lie, huh? <laughs> Not lying, maybe. She's joking. We're gonna eat high protein tortillas. Mm -hmm. cool. is phase three of the day. And during that time, there is chaos in terms of which neuromodulators are most present in the brain, is that during sleep, you have incredible peaks in acetylcholine and drops in acetylcholine. You have incredible peaks in dopamine and drops in dopamine. You have incredible peaks in serotonin and drops in serotonin. So phase three. <laughs> It's 16 to 24 hours after waking up. This is the time when we are resting and sleeping. So here are some action points which Andrew Huberman recommends for sleep optimization. So number one is viewing sunlight in the morning and afternoon for 10 to 30 minutes. Number two, wake up and go to sleep in the same time. So having a consistent sleeping schedule. Number three, avoid uh, caffeine uh, eight to 10 hours before your sleep, avoiding bright lights before sleep. Uh, sleeping in a cool and dark room, best temperature is 18 degrees. We're gonna try out some couple things. Uh, I am also doing some things, for example, as blue light blockers, tracking my sleep with our ring, putting down the light and supplementing. So later we're gonna uh, try out Andrew Huberman's sleep cocktail there are supplements that for most people will greatly improve their ability to fall and stay asleep magnesium threonate apigenin and theanine first so 145 milligrams of magnesium threonate 50 50 milligrams of apigenin and 100 to 400 milligrams of theanine many people find allows them to get really drowsy and fall asleep sleep really deeply and they feel much more refreshed the next day and they don't have a grogginess. The ideal time to take those is 30 to 60 minutes before bedtime, especially if you haven't had anything to eat. For It's always maximize exposure to sunlight in the first half of the day. Number one thing for just making sure that you sleep well that night. And then mm -hmm. limiting artificial light exposure by dimming lights from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Very few people do those two things. Elevating your feet either with a pillow or by elevating the end of your bed by about three to five degrees can be really beneficial for increasing the depth of sleep because of the so-called glymphatic washout. This is the movement of and circulation of fluids in your 
brain at night. We all know how important it is to get enough restful sleep, but many of us suffer from lack of sleep or lack of knowledge of optimizing the sleep. That is why I'm excited to share with you guys a free sleep optimization guide that will help you to get most restful sleep possible. Learning about circadian rhythm, sleep chronotype, biohacking, optimizing the sleep with Aura Ring, using supplements that can help you get a better night rest. Click the link in bio to get the free access to it. Today I'm gonna share my experience after following Andrew Huberman's daily routine for 30 days. Let's take a look at my sleep score. For starting the program, my sleep score was around 80, total sleep around 7 and a half hours, and readiness score around 85 to 86. After following his routine for 30 days, my sleep score has improved to 90, uh, total sleep around 8 to 8 and a half hours, readiness score around 90, so it has been a great improvement overall. So let's review what I did during these days. First of all, I started my day with electrolytes and salt water for optimal hydration and I see changes in my energy levels, so I will definitely will be doing it forward. Then I follow this up with a cold shower to help me wake up and get my blood flowing. This was a great way to boost my energy for the day. Been doing cold showers for some quite time and I absolutely love it. I think it's one of the best ways to wake you up in the morning and get you energized for the day. And it's good for your mental getting out of your comfort zone in the morning. And if you accomplish it first thing in the morning, it sets you up for the good day. Next one was the meditation. Also, I am a big fan of meditation. I included Andrew Huberman's principle of imagining two difficult tasks or goals for the day and consequences of failing them. This gave me like an extra push or motivation for the day to accomplish these tasks. Definitely will be including this in my meditation forwards. I then exposed myself in sunlight exposure to reset my circadian rhythm. As I am living in Netherlands, it's always not possible to get sunlight exposure, but whenever it's possible, I will always be outside to get that sunlight exposure. As I have noticed, it increases my sleep quality. Next one is delaying coffee for 90 minutes, at least for me personally, when I do cold shower or drinking salt electrolytes water in the morning, I am not craving coffee because I feel pretty energized after those things. So for me, it's no problem to delay the coffee. Let's review Andrew Huberman's complete fitness protocol for the week, which I did. Huberman doesn't do squats or deadlifts, surprisingly. So on the Monday, we did the leg day. On Tuesday, we did the heat and cold cycling, 20 minutes in sauna, two to five minutes in cold plunge, repeated three times. So Andrew mentions that sauna once per week, can increase growth hormone and ice baths shouldn't be done after workout because it can prevent your hypertrophy so that's a good takeaway on wednesday we did the cardio zone 3 level for 30 minutes thursday we did upper body and abs friday we did high intensity training for 20 minutes the goal was to get heart rate way up and train legs without weights saturday we did arms calves and neck and on sunday we finished it with one hour long run in zone 2 level. Overall decent fitness protocol, however my goal is to train for hypertrophy, train each muscle group at least 2 times a week, however I should include one endurance cardio training in my weekly schedule for optimal health performance. Because lately I was lacking my endurance cardio trainings. Andrew mentions that scientifically it has been proven that humans need both cardiovascular training and resistance training for optimal performance health. He also knows that physical exercising can dramatically improve your mental health. Next one on the list was intermittent fasting. I am myself a big fan of intermittent fasting, especially for the focus and energy benefits what it provides. However, I don't really like to train fasted, especially if it's a leg day or heavy lifting session because I don't feel that I have that much energy for it. Definitely will do fasting in the future, but only for my cognitive difficult tasks. Then, 19 minute work cycles in my daily life. This helped me to stay productive and focused throughout my day. Usually I find myself very distracted and multitasking when I'm trying to focus on one task, but the 19 minute work cycle really gave me like energy to focus just on one thing and I had the time to accomplish the tasks. Then the second day of my day was being creative. This helped me to do some fun stuff such as reading book, video editing, cooking some new meals. Please. 
I really enjoyed splitting my day in three phases so that I could plan my first half of the day for difficult tasks and easy and enjoyable tasks for the second and third part of the day. Definitely will be doing this in my daily routine. In the third phase, I worked on my sleep optimization. This included consistent sleep schedule, sunlight exposure, doing something relaxing before bed and supplementing. However, before supplementing, I think you should always prioritize sunlight exposure, consistent sleep schedule and only then you should think about adding supplements to your sleep optimization so overall i'm very happy about agile huberman daily routine and i highly recommend to everyone who wants to improve their sleep health and overall well-being if you enjoyed this video make sure you like this video subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video